Volson Lords of Mayhem is a fun game with excellent graphics and does a lot right for a hack and slash looter. I found myself getting into the game, trying to get my perfect build. In a vacuum, that would be fantastic, but there are other games. So how does it stand up against its competition? Let's find out. Well, the premise and story are confusing. I find it difficult to explain. The gist is that you're part of an elite team that finds magic users and destroys them. You're revered for it, but during the opening battle, you turn into something and now you can use magic. Yikes! It's going to be a problem trying to get back into the army with your dad, but after using magic, you're addicted. So why not keep going? You can't sin anymore, right? Why, if they're so against magic, does the main character keep using it? And then later, to keep a low profile, the main character joins the enemy army and helps them immensely, saving their whole city. This is the exact opposite of staying on the down low. Good thing the mechanics are better than the story. Also, I should mention here that the dialogue is silly, Maybe a translation issue, but I don't think so. They say some bizarre things. This isn't important to me, but it is for some, so I needed to mention it. Oh, really? Prove it. You're such a tool. That does not seem like something a demon would say. All right, point taken. Now, the areas you fight in are varied between hubs and dungeons. Hubs are developer-crafted areas that are always the same, and dungeons are randomly generated. I enjoy how both have encounters to find. It's like a mini side area with a bounty. For example, kill all the enemies or kill one mini boss. Then you're showered with loot and your choice of a piece of strong gear. It made me explore all the areas I could because killing bosses is fun and more equipment is always excellent. Side note, the game is generous about fast travel. You can cast a town portal spell whenever you want, and there doesn't seem to be a limit on how often. Also, you can fast travel by clicking on the map, which won't leave a portal behind. Anyway, the combat is fun if you pick the melee class. I accidentally picked the lamest class to start, the ranged one, and I was getting bored. So I decided to switch it up and wow, it was a huge difference. The melee class kicks serious ass. They hit so hard and when enemies explode in a mist of blood, it feels pretty good. You don't get the same hard hitting action from the ranged class. The enemies fall quick, but not in a big pile of bloody guts. The combat with the melee is so much more dynamic, too. You need to jump in and out of range with a dodge roll. Seeing the enormous critical numbers with a huge axe is satisfying as well. It's interesting the willpower, or mana bar, and the rage bar are shared. So the more physical attacking you do, the faster your rage bar goes up, and then your willpower bar goes down. I've never seen anything like it. And if you're a full melee build, there's no way you're going to be casting any spells. The biggest claim Volson makes is that you're free to customize your character any way you want. There's truth to that, but it's limited. Especially when you look at the active skills, which are locked to melee or magic and or dagger ranged characters. Still, the skills are a lot of fun to use and the active ability I had on the ranger was great. The game has a lot more skills than I expected. The developer was constantly adding new ones all the time during the early access period. They dish them out as you progress in the game, so I'm excited to see the ones from late game. While they don't let you customize which skills you can choose, you can assign points as the skills level up. So you do have some customization where you want to spend the points. Maybe you want to make the spear jump happen faster or hit harder. 
useful, but the upgrades are expected. Even though the idea of increasing the shockwave on your spear jump sounds appealing, it isn't altering the skill significantly. The spaghetti passive tree is going to look very familiar if you've played Path of Exile. There's no way around it. However, there's a twist. You're able to rotate the different levels of the tree. The only catch is that the levels need to connect for the skills to be active. There's potential for having two different builds at a time. The game lets you get to the second level quick enough, but it would take away from spending more points on a stronger single build. Where it's interesting is how you can line up the rows, so you're not forced to go down a path you don't want for other skills. I had to rotate it for my warrior to select the tree that would be more damage focused than shields. This is where you have the most significant control over your character. I'm sure the experiments that people have will yield some wild results, but for the rest of us, there are a couple apparent paths that are neatly named like Soldier or Warmonger or Child of Fury for a warrior. Volson does a great job with the loot and enough drops that you're continually evaluating new gear. That's the point of the game as far as I'm concerned. The constant rise of power and the fact that you have to take on bigger and badder enemies. Also, the better gear has slots for gems. Now, there are three types of slots with three different levels. So, for example, a ring will have a support slot three, and that will correspond to the gem. You need to read carefully since all the gems can fit into any slot. You'll see a long list of what the gem does in each of the nine slot types. This is interesting since that means all the gems are valuable. You're not going to find a useless gem, you only need to find the correct gear for it. Here you can see the character creator and that you can choose between a male and female character with many different facial options, eye colors, left and right eye, which is kind of interesting. You can have different color hair, different style. It's not like it's incredibly vast, but it's nice that there are this many options. And that beard is really ridiculous looking. And that's the same deal for the female characters. Enough options that you can make an interesting looking character, but not a million, at, which would be just too much work and effort for such a small team. One thing to note here is that if you aren't careful, and you select a whole bunch of different things, or if you do a male character first, then after the fact, your lady character can have a beard. And now she has a beard, which I think is very funny. My character has a beard now. <laughs> she really has a beard. Oh, I should have played with that character. I wonder if it would have let me. Look, I struggle to recommend Volson to anyone. I ended up finding it fun once I switched to the warrior. The skill tree sucks me in, but my biggest issue with Volson is that it's generic. I struggle to find meaning in the story, and the main character is bland. There are no significant wow factors. For example, the first skill with the melee character swings a hammer down. It's fun at first, but it's getting a little stale. I don't finish the fight amazed at how crazy it looked, especially when compared to other games in the genre. Also. I can't see how Volson can compare to Path of Exile. I don't mean to crap on Volson, but I find Path of Exile to be an excellent game that's free to play, very difficult to compete against. If I had to compare them, then Path of Exile wins, but I could see Volson winning for some people. So that's what you have to wrestle with. Are you finished with Path of Exile and want more? Then Volson should be the game for you. For the sake of history, Let's talk about what the game was supposed to be for a second. The original Kickstarter video spoke about an open world and some crafting, which isn't in the game. Development was troubled, and I'm not going to speculate. I respect how much they did get into the game with a character creator and dies, so you can actually create something unique. It's crazy to imagine how much hard work they must have put into Volson, but I'm not one of the backers. Still, the developer worked their butt off to deliver a game, and that is difficult to deny. Overall, 
Volson is a well-made game that looks great, and <laughs> I've had fun. It hits all the right spots for a hacky, slashy, looty action game. If you're bored of the other offerings right now, then you should absolutely consider Volson. You can play with friends online if you want, as when the server troubles are fixed. As long as the story issues don't bother you, then you should definitely pick up this game. Thank you, thank you. Volson was a pretty tough one to determine, but what should I play next? Thanks for watching. I almost just dropped my phone, so I'm out of breath and I almost died because of it. It almost broke, and uh, you should subscribe because of that.